Hello, and welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. Today I have my Panera Charged Lemonade with me in the mango flavor. I feel like the Panera Charged Lemonades have been pretty hyped, at least in the circles I run in on the internet and in real life. So I think it's pretty applicable. This is the drink I'm opening up with this video for because I'm talking about hyped books that I adore. Hi, my name is Sunny. On this channel, on A Sunny Book Nook, we like to talk about books and gay and lesbian shit. So today I'm going to be bringing to you a list of authors and books that I think are just worth the hype, that have been hyped and have been talked about a lot on the internet, and that I think, you know, it was deserved, like serve, slay, etc. So let's just get into my, I have, I have a fucking, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to lift it because it's such a massive fucking stack of books oh my fucking god yeah okay and there's not this isn't even the whole fucking stack so the first book i want to talk about is one that was hyped more so back in the mid 2010s i guess and that is the night circus by aaron morgenstern this is a fantasy novel that is written in a kind of simplistic way that really allows for the magical storytelling and imagery to shine through. There are some beautiful, beautiful scenes of fantastical, magical worlds and possibilities in these rooms and tents within the night circus, which kind of goes across time in this ephemeral but constant way that just pops up out of nowhere. And then there's some fanatics that are obsessed with it. And then there's like a star cross lovers situation in here as well and an apprenticeship situation like a competition it's it's just very simple in its complexity i would say and it just feels like a fairy tale in some ways so i get why some people didn't buy into the hype when it was getting a lot of hype but i did read it because of the hype and also because Aaron Morgenstern's latest release The Starless Sea was one of my favorite reads of like 2019 which is when it was released so I was like okay well I might as well check out her first book and I I really did enjoy it and I would recommend it so this is a hyped book that hasn't been talked about as much lately on the internet but that I still think is worth it still holds up I guess I mean I haven't revisited it since like last year when I was trying to point out to my podcast co-host some of the scenes and imagery that only books can allow that can't be pictured in you know even like animation much less like live action you know so this is the type of book that's like you want it to be visualized so bad because it's such a beautiful and compelling visual that is being written but that is basically like I feel like impossible to convey outside of the realm of a book and fantastic and, and fantasy storytelling. I think I'm gonna stick within the fantasy genre with these next couple recommendations but the next book I want to talk about is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. I just think Brandon Sanderson in general is a very hyped author but for a good fucking reason. Like I've also seen some criticisms of him and his writing style that is like it's very formulaic and almost repetitive and simplistic but I still think that's what allows his stories to be so addictive because the world building itself and the magic systems that he describes and delineates through his narratives are so fucking compelling and interesting. This was my first one of the first fantasy books I ever picked up that was like a legit fantasy and I fucking loved it so much. I absolutely devoured these long ass, thick ass books. This whole trilogy, I was like, oh my God, I, I'm obsessed. And though I haven't revisited this particular trilogy, although I have read more of his books and also thoroughly enjoyed them, I don't think I've ever read a Brandon Sanderson that I've rated lower than like four or 4.5 stars, you know? This is a very different fantasy from this type of fantasy because this is very like hard fantasy and this is more historical magical realism with a lot of beautiful imagery. This is very much like epic, save the world bullshit that is nonetheless very compelling in my opinion. We are following our main character who is an orphan girl and she has these magical powers that she's really 
you know, has no real grasp on it because she is a street urchin. And then eventually she gets roped into this group of political agitators that want to overthrow the emperor who like has been ruling over this city and this land for the past several thousand years and has enforced this like brutal class system that essentially enslaves like 90% of the population. The way that the magic gets revealed and learned and cultivated within our main character was so compelling. My only main criticism of this is how the only female character is the main female, is the main character. Like I just, there are like, hardly any female side characters, which is just like, okay, well, I, I, I don't know about all that, but I still think this is a great fantasy. I don't want to give too many details about it because I just think it's something that you need to go into and see unfold because that's what happened with me and I fucking adored it. I don't want to explain more about the magic system also because it's so hyped, like you probably have an idea of what it's about. But yeah, I just think that this series has so much hype that is deserved and yeah just fucking phenomenal i i love brandon sanderson's ability to construct worlds and then explain them you know like through like heist stories and through narratives that follow structures of fantasy that we've come to understand and enjoy like you know the overthrowing of a oppressive ruler but through the way that's just like unexpected and amazing. Another hyped fantasy author whom I absolutely adore is N.K. Jemisin. I haven't read all of her books, but this trilogy, the Broken Earth trilogy, is fucking phenomenal. The fifth season is a masterpiece in multiple perspectives and in world building. I have a full review of this that sort of deconstructs the decolonial and anti-oppression and race and gender politics, well, more race politics of this world and how the magical and science fiction elements of it are developed and constructed. So that's gonna be in the cards. You should go watch it if you want. But this book is very hyped. Everyone who reads it loves it. And for a very fucking good reason. Basically in this world, like the, the, the apocalypse is happening every 50 years and there are these people who are able to control the earth but who are widely despised and feared because of their abilities to affect the shifting of the earth that people have come to anticipate and to attempt to survive through. Each one of these occurrences is called the fifth season because you know there's four seasons but then there's a fifth one in this post-apocalyptic future world in which the entire world is back on one Pangea-esque continent that is shaken up by Father Earth every, you know, century or so. And we follow these three alternating perspectives, one of which is in the second person voice. It's like, you did this, you did that. And then there's an adult woman who is trying to run and find her child after coming home and seeing that her other child has been brutally murdered by her husband. And things unfold from there. We also get a perspective of a young girl who has recently been discovered to be in origin, the kind of person who has the magical, fantastical, who has the capability to control the earth in this way. And she's being taken away by like the government essentially to be trained in this place called the Fulcrum. But this book is just so fucking phenomenal. N.K. Jemisin's mind and writing and ability to construct this fantasy world, oh my gosh, just mind-blowingly spectacular and so rich with detail and thematic, fascinating, just things you could just peel back layer by layer for hours on end and it's fucking phenomenal. The other thing is that it's incredibly fast paced and because we're alternating through these different perspectives and each character, each perspective has its own sort of like plot or you know progression of things that are happening obviously it is just so compelling to see and like you just never want to put it down I think. It's very hyped, but I'm adding to it. I'm contributing to the hype because this is a book that you should definitely read. Even if you don't think you like fantasy or sci-fi, this is the type of book that is literary enough or like commercial enough for I think any type of reader to 
sort of enjoy to some extent. This whole fucking trilogy is a, a masterclass in fantasy and science fiction and just writing in general. The next book I want to talk about is a historical fiction, somewhat magical realism book, and that is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. I know a lot of people have talked about The Nickel Boys on YouTube recently, on BookTube, but I think this book, which won the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Award, so that's basically like the highest level of hype you could experience as like a writer or, you know, as a piece of literature, but I still think that this book is fucking phenomenal. I read it years ago at this point, but it still lives in my mind as a reimagining of history that feels so present and alive because it follows these enslaved people who escape a plantation through and along the Underground Railroad that has been reimagined as a like literal physical railroad that you know in history like the underground railroad was more of just a colloquial way of referring to how slaves would escape their enslavement and run away from the people who attempted to own them we're following this perspective of people who are running away and then all of the different ways they have to dodge the slave catchers that are chasing after them and the different communities they have to find hiding places in and how our characters just survive amidst this historical concept this historical world that Colson Whitehead has has conceived in brilliance and just in a fantastic way that follows these characters in these incredibly compelling situations that I found very, very interesting. And it's like the type of story that very much lives in the legacy of like Toni Morrison, I guess. And the way that magical realism is imbued with real life history of slavery and the traumatic effects of that on people's day-to-day -day lives and the ways that people survived through it, around it, and escaping it. So this is a book that has experienced the hype of, you know, winning a lot of awards, but that I think is worth it and it makes sense to me why this book has won so many awards and I do think it is worth picking up if you haven't read any Colson Whitehead before or if you've just considered reading this in general. So yeah, that's my pitch to you. The next book I want to talk about is a, another historical fiction without any sort of magical realism following life and families in the aftermath of slavery. So it's not in the same time period at all, but that book is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This book has experienced a lot of hype, I think, and a lot of people have read it already, so that's good. But this book follows these two sisters who both grow up in a entirely black community that very much values light skin and that attempts to cultivate it through like intentional marriages and breeding, essentially. But these two sisters like run away and move to the big city and then they split paths because one of them marries a white man and passes over the color line and essentially goes undercover as a presumed white woman. And the other sister has a child with a dark skinned black man and her child is very like visibly black and dark skinned. And she takes her child and goes back to her community that again, very much values light skin. So her daughter is very much like, isolated from the community and the community dynamics. So we follow these two different characters as they split paths and then how they navigate their environments and, and lives now. And then we also follow their like descendants essentially. But the alternating perspectives in this book were really interesting, I think. And it was very much a well-imagined historical fiction novel that was well-written and with characters that were very compelling to follow as their lives unfolded. So I think that this is a book that got a lot of hype that was well-deserved, and that if you haven't read it already, you should definitely pick it up. Another historical fiction family saga book that follows a lot of different perspectives that you should definitely read is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, which was a National Book Award finalist, so again, very much hyped. Oh, and I think The Vanishing Half sold like a million copies or something, probably more than that at this point. This book is a historical fiction novel that follows the family lineage of this Korean woman who 
becomes pregnant by this like man who visits her small island and then she moves to Japan and basically we're seeing throughout the 20th century the experiences that Korean people had underneath Japanese occupation and throughout the wars across the 20th century and it was absolutely harrowing and heartbreaking because we follow these four generations of the family up until like contemporary times and the different ways that they managed to survive and pass on their stories or the way that stories got lost throughout history. But I found this book to be profoundly impactful and very compelling. And I think that as a historical fiction novel, it's very successful in what it attempts to do and that the alternating and differing perspectives as we go throughout it are meaningful in a way that various perspectives in historical fiction novels can sometimes fall flat in because we really do get like this four-dimensional perspective on a family and it was just so fucking good so if you haven't read it already I should I would definitely implore you to pick it up if historical fiction is your thing even if it's not I think that it's written in this like literary and uh, coherently intellectual way that is still simplistic enough for like any reader or any person trying to get back into reading would really enjoy. So definitely pick this one up. Another book that follows the perspectives of different people across a span of history somewhat is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo that has also been very highly praised and won the Booker Prize in 2019. So again, another award winning hyped novel. This book, we follow different perspectives of women and non binary people, girl, woman, other, and how they navigate their lives and the very different experiences they have as black girls, women, other in Britain, and the experiences they have from very queer and feminist and also like anti-queer, anti-feminist perspectives. It feels so compelling narratively because you just never want to stop fucking reading it. I, I fucking adored this book and it is really a masterclass in storytelling and in following these varying women's experiences with life family, their careers, and there's some immigrant women that we follow, some children of immigrants, and all of these characters are like loosely connected to each other in one way or the other that sort of is delivered in the final elements of the book in this really spectacular way that I really enjoyed. But this is just such a good book that spans so many different narratives, but still feels so comprehensive of every single person's individual like life and the ways that they intersect with each other. So I definitely pick this one up if you haven't already. You know the deal, I have to go, but this video might be part one of a series or I might just come back and continue filming this one video. You'll see, you'll see by the time this is up. Regardless, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video, hopefully. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I do have a Patreon if, if you do want to support me and tip me for my work or get some other perks and stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll let you go, bye.